Hey everyone, welcome back with a new lecture with how to calculate measurement uncertainty for microbiological measurements and sources of uncertainty. There are many sources of uncertainty during the microbiological measurements, during the procedure itself. And these sources of uncertainty should be controlled during the estimation of measurement uncertainty and I'll try to explain them in details. For calling a count or most probable number techniques, Sources of uncertainty such as taking a test portion at the beginning from the lab sample or test sample, initial suspension preparation after that, and then serial dilution, and inoculation, and incubation, and counting of colonies also source of uncertainty. Counting of colonies in colony count technique or detection of growth in most probable number technique, and confirmation if you need to confirm the result, also confirmation also can be source of uncertainty uncertainty if appropriate and also sampling uncertainty sampling uncertainty also in the source of uncertainty but it, it's not included in this standard and I will explain sampling uncertainty at the end of this course during the whole process of microbiological measurements first sampling they will make sampling to collect the required sample and send it to the lab sampling can have uncertainty also so Sampling uncertainty shall be calculated and added at the end to the combined uncertainty and that I will add to this training course at the end inshallah. Then they will send the sample to the lab, so lab sample and this lab sample should be homogenized well and the homogenization also will affect on the result. So homogeneity can affect, can be a source of uncertainty in the, in, in the measurement. Then taking test portions and that also can be a source of uncertainty, then initial suspension then technical operations and calculations and all of these things you will find many sources of uncertainty because this is the whole procedure of analysis operator equipment culture media reagents and also confirmation if required so all of these can be sources of uncertainty then the result of this sample and to take the result there is a bias to uh, bias also can can be effect and but bias as I explained before it cannot be included in this uh, in this estimation for measurement uncertainty and let's take each source individually first sampling sampling uncertainty errors associated with the drawing of the sample and the transportation of samples to the lab and the storage and everything can contribute to the overall uncertainty and according to ISO IEC 1725 2017 edition it shall be calculated so you have to calculate measurement uncertainty due to sampling and that's not included not covered by this document but in, uh, covered in Nordist and you are can get mine they explained how to calculate measurement uncertainty in details and I will do this in this training course inshallah and bias second point bias because it's not included and cannot be covered in this document and also in other documents because usually there is no reference value in microbiological measurements and also we have many critical factors during the whole measurement process source and type of culture media and other reagents dilution serial dilutions and initial suspension inoculation and incubation counting techniques or detection of the gross and most probable number technique, counting techniques, uh, manual or automated, changes to the operators, and lab to control the performance of the measurement process and to ensure that ensure the accuracy of results at the end, lab shall have a quality control program to control the performance for each step in this process and to ensure the accuracy of the final result. So quality control program is very important in every lab to ensure the accuracy of the result at the end. So you should take care for every step during the whole measurement process. In chemical analysis, you can control the whole process, the whole measurement process only.
to ensure the accuracy of the result by running only one sample, spike sample. Spike sample or certified reference material and the result of this sample, you will spike the sample, the sample that you analyze or blank sample with the known concentration of target analytes. Then you will check the result and the result will be divided by the reference value or the known concentration that you know, multiply 200 to get the recovery. Recovery, from this recovery, you should have the acceptable range for recovery according to the guideline used, maybe from 70 up to 120 percentage, maybe from 80 up to 120 percentage. That will be according to the guideline used. So recovery should be within acceptable range to ensure the accuracy of results for all samples after that. So result of this sample should be within acceptable range but based on the guideline used. That to assess recovery, to assess the efficiency of the method. And each step during the whole measurement process also shall be performed accurately to get the accepted recovery. So if you get the accepted recovery, so you know now that the whole measurement process done perfect and uh, you, the result of the sample will be also accepted. In microbiology lab, you should control each step during the whole measurement process and you should control all critical factors that I have explained before because you don't have reference value. But how do you control these factors? First, media, culture media, which is very important. You should control the media. You should ensure the performance of media to obtain accurate and reliable results in microbial cultures and identification. But how you can do this? Quality control for the media is very important. That's why I'll try to explain in details. First step of that quality control program, quality control of media, which is very important to be controlled to ensure the accuracy of the results. Purchase a high quality media from a reputable supplier or manually prepare your own media according to standard protocol and check if you purchase that from uh, the media from the uh, supplier you should check the expired date should, should not be expired and storage conditions should be followed as per the manufacturer instruction. Then we have sterilization. Ensure that all media reagents and equipments used are properly sterilized to prevent contamination. And that will be by using autoclave, which should be controlled also. Labeling and documentation. All media should be labeled with preparation date, expiry date, and any other information about the content of this media. Storage conditions also are very important as I explained before. Media should be stored at proper conditions, required temperature or away from light if that's required. You should follow manufacturing instruction or recommendation or established protocol if you will prepare your own media. Then the quality assurance to ensure consistent quality of media regularly every day. You should test a sample of the media to ensure that this media is sterilized well to ensure sterility and incubate media without inoculation. Media also you should incubate media, specific sample of this media, without inoculation to verify their sterility. And you should ensure the performance of the media. You should ensure that this media can support the growth of target organisms. So you should media performance testing, perform routine quality control test with every sequence for every type of analysis to ensure the media, that the media support the growth of a specific microorganism. And use known control strains, reference strains, to verify the media's ability to support growth and confirm that they yield the expected results. And also using reference cultures, you can check or test the growth performance of the media. Periodically test the media with the reference cultures to check if they promote the growth of target organism as expected or not. And during preparation or inoculation of the media, how you will ensure that this media will not be contaminated with other organisms? So you should maintain a strict aseptic technique. And these mentioned points 
very important to ensure the performance of the media and to ensure the growth performance of the media and to ensure that this media will give you the expected result. That was the end for our lecture for today. In the next lecture, I will continue explaining how to make quality control program for microbiological measurements. And you should know that this training course is not for quality control program and how to do this, but I try to, to add some points to be able to use these points to make your quality control program uh, because that's very important for estimation of measurement uncertainty. Thank you and see you in the next lecture.